And we're live. Hello, everyone, for the fourth ever XYZ live stream. And as mentioned, we're going to be trying to do this every single week. Um, and I hope you've been enjoying the content so far. So, David, David Hiscox of XYZ, uh, welcome, welcome back once again. Thanks very much, Matty. I can't believe that we've, this is our fourth one already. Yeah, fourth one. We'll, uh, I, feel just, I guess we we'll just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting right into the xyz live streaming yeah we're doing pretty well Ooh, pig just walked past by me <laughs> i've got my mug now i'm gonna uh... oh bringing back memories of 1988 how can you do that you're triggering me right at the very start well, you should be triggered because the Hawks are the greatest team that ever existed. La, 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 and... la, la. Oh, wait, 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 la, 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 la. <laughs> Well, uh, not all of us can go for good teams, if you know what I mean. I mean, some of us have to go for terrible teams and others go for worse teams like, like Melbourne. Pro problem is I can't even say that at least we've got the money now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right, well, uh, let's, let's get straight into it. So uh, the big issue of the day, obviously, is the mass shooting in in Florida, which is obviously a major tragedy. It's a horrible act that for anyone to do. Um, would it be really good if we could, people, we're, we're on the other side of the world, so it's a bit harder for us, but it would be good if people could just mourn the death of these of these innocent children who did nothing to deserve getting, getting shot and their families who didn't deserve to have their loved ones taken from them. However, before the bodies were even cold, the left had to come out and call for gun control and use this tragedy to push their agenda. And I, this, this annoyed me quite a bit, and I would imagine it annoyed you as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, you see the memes straight out. It's like they're pre-prepped. But, um, yeah, it, it's, it, whenever something like this happens, like the same side's just buttheads. Um, and it's, it's going to continue. Um, I hope that the Americans can keep this... Second Amendment, right? I'm, as a libertarian, I'm pretty sure you have some pretty strong um, feelings, some pretty strong arguments about this. Yeah. So I don't think America is ever going to lose the Second Amendment. Mm. Uh, the majority of the company of the country is armed. So good luck. Especially they have they have this culture of of people owning guns. So if they were to try and remove the Second Amendment, and if they were trying, if they were to try to disarm people, it would it would be not pretty for the people trying to do that. Um, I mean, they, they would have to be, it would have to be some serious level of oppression for them to be able to try and do that. And it, it, they'd be willing, they'd have to be willing to risk a civil war in order to take guns off these people. And I just don't see that ever happening. Happening. I just, my, my position on it, I mean, we can go into it a bit further, but in no, terms of the will. gun control yeah. in general, I wish Australia had its own, Second Amendment type thing. I wish we had had our right to own guns kept intact as well. The difference is with Australia and with America is obviously America won their freedom with a civil war. So their founding fathers kind of saw the need to have those guns because they fought a civil war against an oppressive government. So they thought, well, we should probably give people the, the right to do that in the future and protect that right going forward. Um, but with Australia, because it was founded on a vote and we haven't actually left the queen either people in australia haven't really got that in our national identity and our national memory so we didn't have that that constitutional protection there hmm. well yeah if we're going to talk about this i guess it's important to make the case um as to why like this shouldn't be a reason to take guns away from people um just uh, borrow, borrowing heavily from stefan molyneux um, it's really interesting when you look at the actual case about the shooter himself. Um, his dad, he died when he was very young. So there's, there's a common link across all of these shooters that their dad is not involved in their lives. Um, having a father die isn't always like, um, ironically, it's actually not always the worst thing that can happen to like a kid. Like often having a dad who's alive but not involved in the, in the, in the kid's life can be worse. But it's, it's, a general trend across across the board with all of these shootings. Um, his stepmother had no control over him. Um, the police were brought around apparently 37 times to 
deal with domestic disturbances with this kid. Mm. There were red flags galore. Um, the, mm. he, he cut himself on Snapchat, <laughs> so publicly he cut himself. Um, and somebody even called the FBI. Somebody even called the FBI to tip him off to tip off the FBI about this guy's behaviour. I heard that. I heard that part. Yeah, yeah. Basically saying, look, this guy is dangerous. He's been talking about shooting up the school. He has a gun. He does all this erratic behaviour. So you have this situation where the government authorities had every reason to step in and uh, take this guy's guns away. And the system was in place, the laws were in place, but involved yeah. the people who had responsibility um, to do this sort of, to actually step in and stop a shooting from happening, they didn't actually take responsibility and they didn't enforce the law. Yep, and this is, this is what I heard as well. So I heard that the FBI had actually been informed about him and, in fact, they were given a tip-off beforehand uh, but obviously they were too busy trying to crack down on trolls on Facebook and uh, other such such silliness because then they didn't have the resources to follow up an obvious an obvious threat to society. Now I haven't actually seen Molyneux's presentation yet. It's it's sitting there waiting to go. I haven't had the time to go into it. So I'm in. in I mean, obviously there's going to be issues with this guy that, like you said, there's probably going to be sort of you know running threads across with him that, that are the same with, with other such other shooters of the same ilk or other people of the same ilk who are shooters. So there's going to be sort of common threads is what I'm trying to say. Um, the thing is, it's like, I mean, I would imagine that he was made, was he maybe on antidepressants as well? Like I, this is, this is one common one. I, because I haven't seen the actual ah, facts, then I actually don't I think know. He'd been taking, he'd been taking medication for ADHD. Yeah. Yeah, so he was on a pharmaceutical. Don't quote me on that, but he he he'd been taking some kind of medication. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it wouldn't surprise me at all because, as far as I can tell, pretty much all of these shooters are on some sort of pharmaceutical medication. Which um, did we speak about drug legalization and prohibition last week? I can't remember because that would, you know, if yeah, people could have access to things like psilocybin mushrooms and marijuana and all that kind of thing, it might actually really help their mental issue, their mental health issue. But obviously, what I want to talk about today mainly is. First of all, the less reaction and using this strategy to push their gun control the same way John Howard did in 1996. Now, he's obviously a conservative, but he did the same sort of thing. He used it to further his own political political worth, uh, political value, so to speak. And, I mean, you would have been forgiven back then for, for falling into it because you didn't have the access to the, to the evidence and the truth like we do today. And the thing is... Again, like you borrowed borrow from Stefan Molyneux, what really truly opened my eyes was his presentation, The Truth About Gun Control, along with a few others after that. And the fact is that there is no correlation between number of people who get murdered, i.e. homicide or even suicide, and the number of guns in a society. And that's true everywhere in the world. So you can control for country, you control for state, you control for uh, region. It, it, it does not matter. There is no correlation between the number of guns and the number of people who are killed in society. And one of the things that, see, I was I was on Twitter and I was asking people a very, very simple question. All these fools who are using this tragedy to push their agenda, I asked them, what gun did the niece attacker use when he killed 86 people? And I have not yet got a single answer. Funny that, don't you think? Well, yeah, if somebody had had a gun in the crowd, they, you know, if, if somebody had an AR-15 in the crowd... Oh, they could obviously, have they must have set up a machine gun behind the massive truck that he was using to mow people down. You can do um, much more damage. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, one of the things which, which really struck me was the fact that um, there was the church massacre a few months ago in the United States, and the guy who committed the massacre, he used an AR-15, but the guy who stopped him also had an AR-15. Yeah, I heard that as well, which is yeah. an interesting point. And, and the thing is, another another point that we should always bring up is, is Israel, where they have specially trained citizens who are basically told, you have to have your gun on you at all times. And if anything ever happens in Israel, they also it just have gets a wall. Up right away. So, oh, they also have a wall, like Wakanda, yeah. apparently, but I haven't seen that film yet. Yeah. <laughs> Black Israel. 
<laughs> but yeah, th- th- just when it came to this gun control thing, you know, La- uh, St- La- 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 Stephen Crowder basically destroyed it in less than a minute. He did his because yeah. he's done plenty of videos about it. He's just gone through. You know, Gun, people are saved by guns. Uh, there's no correlation between homicide and, and gun ownership. You shouldn't, you know, it is. And, and then he sums it up right at the end by saying, if you are using this tragedy to take away someone's God-given right to self-defense, you are evil. You are an evil piece of human crap. If you are using this tragedy to take someone's god-given right to defend themselves and that includes with a gun if you're using this strategy to do that you are a horrendous individual a really truly bad person and you can't stress that enough i mean these people are looking at these poor innocent children and basically spitting on their graves immediately because they are using their deaths to push their agenda and it's agenda not based on any evidence because there is no evidence at all that stopping uh, taking guns away from people will stop these kind of these kind of tragedies. As the Burke Street killer from last year told us, you can do the same thing with a Ford Falcon or whatever he was doing. So I was actually on Twitter as well saying, well, maybe we should ban high powered vehicles because they can be used to kill people as well. It's not the guns. It is not the guns. Don't forget, terrorists took over two planes or three planes and killed 3,000 people on 9-11. No guns involved there either. So it's not the guns. It's the people and it's the situation that they're in. As I'm sure, Stefan Mullen, you probably went into, you might know, you might be able to sort of maybe elaborate a little bit more for, for the people in the, who are watching. Oh, well, um, just actually responding to something you were saying, like, oh, let me just complicate matters a little bit. Um, because one of the things that I've heard, um, like, on the radio is... Uh, one of the school children uh, actually yep. responded very emotionally to Trump because Trump said, "Oh, you know, um, you know," he, he sent his condolences to everybody and made a point that it was a mental health issue. Um, and so, like, there's footage, like, there's audio of um, the uh, like one of the school children, a girl, sort of like basically going off and screaming about Donald Trump and saying this is all your fault because you support gun rights and all this sort of stuff. So that's a really interesting thing because this is someone who is like really caught up in the whole thing and is uh, responding very emotionally to it. So it's um, a little like, like, yes, like it's if you know the facts, it's not focusing on guns, but like there's a lot of um, propaganda Against to be counted and like people are responding very emotionally to this as well like it's a it's an emotional response to say this is all about guns well it's an extremely emotional response and the way it's a, almost a conditioned response as well because whenever there's another yeah, shooting like you said they've it. got yeah they've yeah. got these memes out it's like oh it's the guns it's, a, it's always a school shooting it's a what they it's always a school shooting it must be the gun's fault I want to tell people, you know, this is another fact, another fact that these left-wing fools who want to take our guns away, they're actually communists. We should just start calling them by their real name, communists. One of the facts that they never, ever, ever seem to want to acknowledge is that there has not been a single gun in history that has ever actually killed somebody. The only the, What has killed someone is an individual human being pulling the trigger or maybe dropping the gun or, you know, doing something silly with the gun to cause that gun to go off. No gun has ever got up on two legs and pulled its own trigger. Never, ever, ever has that ever, ever happened. It is always an individual or some sort of accident that causes the death. Um, so what I'm interested in, Matthew, because um, our audience is mostly Australian and if there's on, on the conservative side, um, it's, it's like conservatives are split. Um, on the gun rights issue. Um, and how would you make the case to Australians that we should have um, the kind of gun rights that Americans have, especially in like the context of something like this where you have such an emotional reaction about this and the whole narrative is this is all because of guns? How, yeah. how do you make the case for Australia? Well, it's it's a very... It's a difficult one. Well, it's an easy case to make. So the case itself is very, very easy. All you have to do is point out the facts. Like like I said, there's no correlation between gun ownership and, and violent crime. Um, there's Australians have been sort of brainwashed over the last 20 years or even longer to 
think the same thing. Well, it must be the gun's fault. It's the, the fault of the guns. Guns are bad because a gun was used to kill people. So getting through that brainwashing and that, that conditioning to believe that it's the gun's fault is going to be very, very difficult. I think it's a matter of just repeating the the facts over and over and really engaging on an emotional level and reminding people and reminding people that if you use tragedy to push your political agenda based on a lie, then you are a terrible, terrible individual. Try to take someone's guns away because somebody else did something wrong, taking away their God-given right to defend themselves. Like, what kind of a human being are you? Like, how much of a horrendous individual are you? And the thing is, it would be it's hard to tell people that because so many people have got have sort of taught themselves that, oh well, you know, guns are bad. And if you think you guns, then you must be the bad person. How could you say oh, I'm a bad person? I'm a good person who wants gun control. It's like no, 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 no. If you want gun control, you're either in, misinformed or you're probably not a very good person. Um, obviously, we don't. You know, there's a case to be made for not wanting pe to people to have, you know, like the what is it the 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 50 caliber machine guns that are, you know, shoot 300 rounds and, you know, armor piercing bullets and all that kind of thing. But what I, if we were to go for a strategy, what we should probably consider doing is just saying, well, at least we should be allowed to have handguns. At least we should be allowed to have handguns because I mean, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a God given right to self defense and I should be allowed to defend myself. And, Imagine, I would imagine there are a lot of women out there who aren't physically strong, but like the ability to, to to defend themselves as well. And even if it's not handguns, then we should be allowed, people should be allowed to have tasers or uh, definitely well, pepper spray should be allowed. That's how silly it's getting, isn't it? Like, are there restrictions on tasers and pepper spray? I'm pretty sure In there's Australia? a restriction on, I think there is. I, I'm not 100% on the pepper spray, but I know we can't yeah. get tasers unless they changed that recently. Um, yeah, the the standout in America is like you look at Chicago and it's got that massive um, the massive murder rate. It's well, that's massive. exactly right. And, like they've, and they've got some of the toughest gun laws in in the states. Yeah, exactly. Like, there are it's very very strong gun control in in Chicago, and they you're exactly right. They have massive massive amounts of murder and and gun crime, and I believe like parts of California have horrendous gun crime and. They have ridiculously harsh uh, gun control gun control laws. Well, you need a permit to fart there. Um, what, <laughs> well, yeah, you need a permit to fart, but you can give someone AIDS and you don't go to prison. So it's like <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand the the logic behind that one. Something that struck me, um, uh, it was like on another subject, but um, there was the issue of uh, um, in Venezuela, you know how Venezuela is collapsing due to communism, as usual. And uh, uh, there was the images of a whole bunch of people clogging up uh, a bridge trying to get into Colombia, of all places. And there was, in the article, there was um, a couple of sentences about the truck drivers who were taking food into Venezuela. And they, the, this was the actual line. They said that um, they're not allowed to carry guns to defend themselves. What, going into Venezuela? Going into Venezuela, so they drive in convoy. It's like, if, <laughs> if you're not allowed to defend yourselves with guns, going into a country with literally, like, one of the highest murder rates in the world, like, yeah. it puts, like makes America look like a cakewalk, um, then, uh, like, you're basically saying, well, we're just going to give you more food to hijack, you know, it's more trucks That's to hijack. That's exactly right. And yeah. a pretty, isn't, yeah, isn't gun crime a huge problem in Venezuela it's as massive. well? It's massive. So yeah, it's massive. Like, um, well, like per capita and, like, Per capita and uh, um, in total, like it's just much, much higher. Well, that's exactly yeah. Th there's probably issues with the statistics, and they're not they're under reporting a lot of things. I, it's hard to trust a lot of the information that you get out of places like Venezuela. Um, so, yeah. I mean, we've covered we've covered gun control there. That's so, awesome. if anyone in the audience had any questions. A uh, few people have made some comments, but I'll, I'll probably stick to answering answering the questions. If you if you want to send some through, um, a couple of funny comments. <laughs> Civic nationalism is for cucks. 
<laughs> Call me a cup. Build a wall. Build a wall. Build a wall. Build the, we don't need a wall. We've got an ocean around us. Yeah. yeah. It was just a quick comment this, on the ocean. This is... Um, isn't it funny? So the Greens are sort of hailing the fact that they got more environmental flows for the Murray-Darling Basin. So I've just, I've been commenting, just saying, well, well done to the Greens on wanting more more water to go into the ocean because the ocean doesn't have enough water already. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, like they're just they're like these 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 Greens are idiot. So the next the next thing we want to talk about is a little bit more of a dry. Well, not maybe it's not quite dry. It's the Australia's. Uh, political sex scandal um, was oh, close so to we, a sex scandal. We really, really we're still talking about gun control, aren't we? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, I, I said I wouldn't touch it with a thirty-foot pole. Oh my god! <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> we well, he didn't touch it with a thirty-foot pole. He probably touched it with a, about a five and a half inch pole, depending on the average. <laughs> it's still sad. Uh, like it's it's oh. just sad. Look, here's the thing. It's there's yeah. okay. So he slept with a staffer. All right. Um, not it, it wasn't a very nice thing to do to his wife. In terms of his ability to do his job as um, as a representative, I, I don't see how that would affect him. The issue I probably see here is that he paid this woman quite a lot of money as a staffer. Like he, he gave her a special advisory role. But I was just watching on the Bolt Report before. Apparently, there's some article that was written about the number of advisors that parliamentarians and ministers have, and it's just off the wall. So, saying you can't even you can't even go at part of me, Joyce, for giving her a job as an advisor because all of them have ridiculous a ridiculous number of these advisors. So ultimately, I think I think it's really just a media beat up at the end of the day. I really think we should just leave it to Barnaby and his family to to sort out. I. I if it's going to affect his job, if it's going to affect his ability to do his job, then he should voluntarily resign. But if it's not, then I think we should just leave him be. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Um, like when you look at the number of sex scandals in the Labor Party, like um, even Bill. Sorry, you just cut out for a second. What? Uh, who did you say uh, then? Bill Shorten, the actual leader of the Labor Party. Um, yeah. And yeah, and something about him being with. Uh, the daughter of Quentin Bryce. It's, it's just, it's. Um, I'm like, come on, like it, the the place is incestuous. We know. Well, just just to clarify, you aren't actually accusing him. You are acknowledging that that is just a rumor said by someone else, and uh, you have yes. no idea whether or not that's true. Of course, yeah, yes. yeah. But like the place is incestuous. It's a cesspit, um, and they get paid too much. Anyway, and um, <laughs> Canberra shouldn't exist. Well, you're, yeah, I, I don't think there's a need for a, fe a federal a federal parliament that meets more than maybe twice a year to just pass the budget, and that's it. That's all we they yeah. really need to do, and then leave yeah. pretty much everything to the states, other than uh, national defence and interstate transport, and that's building about it. Like, really, build the like I said, we don't need a wall. We've got a wall. <laughs> We yeah, have let, a, let's have a double wall. Let's have the we, let's have the ocean and a wall. We could build a moat as well. <laughs> yeah, well, that'll that'll do nicely. Yeah, like if you look at Canberra, like the place would just be farmland and maybe maybe like a small town um, yeah. if it wasn't for the federal parliament. There's no economic reason for it to exist, um, and it's that's the reason why it's a uh, what's the expression um, a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a just, city like. Look, it, it's it's main it's main um it's main businesses uh government, porn and drugs you know and welfare <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah yeah well ultimately it, it's, it's all taxpayer it's a completely taxpayer funded city so we we should probably uh, do something about that if the libertarian revolution ever comes yeah yeah it's it's it, it, it's 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 hard for me to get really really excited about this sex scandal because it's just just of the way that I see the whole Canberra situation. Well, that's a thing. Like I, yeah. I can't get annoyed about it either because I can see all these people pointing the finger, and either one, they're probably guilty of doing the same thing. Let's not deny it. Um, there's a very good chance that every one of these people who are, who are pointing the finger have probably done something just as bad, if not worse, in their life. So, yeah. Do you not know, pointing it's, any it's, fingers or naming names, but it's just like when Donald it. Trump 
um, you know, got, uh, you know, th they grab it by the pussy line. It's like, yeah, I, it, who is going to throw the first stone about this? Like, all have yeah. all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Like, come on, man. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, it's he hasn't he he hasn't physically harmed anyone. He's probably hurt his wife's feelings, which is between him and his wife, ultimately. He's, dev he's devastated his family. He's devastated his family. But let's have a look at his family. Like, he, his, his youngest daughter is in her teens. So it's not like he's the father of a young family and he needs to keep that family unit together for the sake of the development of his children. He's got four girls and the, I think the youngest, I don't know how old the youngest one, but a picture of her, she doesn't look younger than 13. Um, so, I mean, she would be the one that would be most affected by the family breakup. But ultimately, if she's reached 13, I mean, even, what, 300 years ago, she would have been considered a fully grown woman by then. So it's not like, it's not like she's really going to be all that negatively affected over the rest of her life, other than maybe she might have some, you know, develop some deep-seated hatred of men and turn into a feminist, in which case, Barnaby, that's your new. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, if, I just don't see... If that see... happens, then we'll have words. Yeah, yeah if, if, if any of your daughters turn into feminazis because of your cheating, then we'll come back to you and we'll revisit it in the future. But, yeah, let's, not, not that he, what he did was, was the right thing to do. It obviously wasn't the right thing to do. But at the same time, there are much more important things going on right now. And his sex scandal is not one of them. And someone just mentioned in chat, it's likely a distraction for something else. So it be interesting to see what's going to come through in the next sort of few weeks, whether we're, whether we're going to get ringed with something that we aren't exactly told about. I'm I'm always interested by that argument. The oh, this is a distraction for this because there are always multiple things going on. Um, I do buy it to a certain extent. Like when, um, yeah, like it, it's yeah, it's it's a great strategy. Like deflect when when there's a big thing going on. But there's always there are always lots and lots of things going on. Yeah, yeah. Another thing, interesting thing that I just wanted to mention as well, because someone just brought it up in the chat as well that the federal government was created to restrict immigration. That is something that the government should 100% do. Um, we should be restricting immigration. And I find it funny when I see Labor, the Labor Party coming out complaining about stagnant wages when, first of all, they, compl they, they then complain about tax a proposed tax cut and then they complain about shutting the border down and then they complain about deregulating the industry. So it's like you just, you're just complaining about all three things that, uh, that will raise wages, but then you're complaining about raised wages, which all that tells you is that the ALP don't actually care about wages. There's the AL, no ALP member that I can remember in my lifetime has ever actually genuinely cared about wages. I mean, maybe some, maybe Hawk and Keating did because they actually did things that did increase wages. So maybe they were the last ones. But since then, I have not seen any of these Labor members or Labor politicians genuinely want to do something that would raise the wages and living standards of Australians. Everything they've done has been to enrich themselves, enrich unions and make public service employees harder to fire, less efficient and paid way too much. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, uh, apparently Dutton is signalling about uh, reducing the immigration rate as well, which would be fantastic. So Mullen has had a bit of a say, if Dutton has had a bit of a say, hopefully we, I think it's important that we just really keep this ball rolling just to try to get the numbers down. Um, mm. I don't know, if, even if it's to like 190,000 from down from 200,000, you know, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it will de sure say... delay the... Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I had to interrupt you because to be fair, when you look at those immigration numbers, a lot of them are students, they're temporary, it's temporary immigration. The net immigration is actually a lot lower, but it's still too high. It's yeah. still yeah. quite a bit too high. It should be it should be non impossible to immigrate here permanently. And it should be very if you are gonna let people get permanent residency, you should make citizenship take at least 20 years. And when after those 20 years, you have to pass a test, which means you're, it says you're fluent in English. You have to vet, believe in freedom of speech and you have to be fully integrated into Australian society. And over those 20 years, no welfare at all. You get no welfare. If you pay the Medicare levy, you can get Medicare, but you get zero welfare. So no family tax benefit, no pensions, 
no income handouts. You can't work for the government either. No permit, no non-citizen should be allowed to be a public servant unless they want to join the army or the police force and be a frontline police officer. Well, a lot of those students do end up um, becoming like full citizenship as well. Um, the way I would have it is mm. we have guest workers and we have citizens and you come here as a guest worker and then you're a guest. And then yep. once you finish working, you go. Um, and I would have immigration. I would have a moratorium on immigration um, for at least a decade um, just to get things stabilised. Yep. You want to you deal with stagnant wages, Labor Party, um, put yep. a moratorium on immigration. And then think point. about taking in people from South Africa. Um, I don't know, the four or five people left in Zimbabwe. Um, and anybody, <laughs> from, <laughs> anybody from Europe who'd like to come across, we could take a lot, of, a lot more whinging poms. Honestly, it's not something that I would disagree with if if there was a moratorium on all immigration and you said, all right, no permanent immigration for the next 10 years. It would definitely be something that, that I would support. I'd, de I'd have to look at, I'd have to revisit it down the track in 10 years just to see how how the systems work, like whether or not it's it's made the society made society better. And if it did, then like, you know, if crime was down and the economy was growing and wages were up and all that kind of thing, then that would be the evidence needed to, to bring it into the future. But then Matthew, you know, it would be one of those things that we'd have to revisit in 10 years. Are you talking about actual evidence-based policy? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know, mate. Uh, Evidence-based <laughs> policy. Are you? Do you mean I just? I'm not going to virtue signal and tell everyone how bad the the guy on the other side is because they did <laughs> something that someone somewhere in some time might have considered bad. Maybe. Yeah. My goodness me. It's amazing how you and I can have this conversation, and you don't call me a racist, and I don't call you a cuck. It's just <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's it's evidence. You know, it's it's, it's an argument. This, this is how it works, people. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted um, to mention as well. You mentioned you yeah, mentioned yeah. Jim Milan. Now I'm developing a serious man crush on this guy. This guy, <laughs> I'm not joking. General, I mean, I know I'm a little bit the, the general, but the way he carries himself is just like he's so man. Like you're like that's a man right there. Like this is a six year old. He, he doesn't even like, try, does he? No, he, he doesn't. Just, and he's great. He's he says just, what he thinks. He says yeah. what he thinks. He doesn't censor himself, and he doesn't back down, and that's amazing. That sounds like, he, that sounds like toxic, toxic masculinity to me. Man. Probably Clementine Ford like will probably hate him. Uh, G Slim just G Slim just mentioned uh, Clementine Ford before, so I thought I'd uh, <laughs> give him a shout out and say, yeah, like Clementine Ford is probably. Oh yeah, sorry, we, we've got to use her real name. Yeah, <laughs> that's her real name. <laughs> She's uh, she's likely hating hating him to bits right now. But if he came out, if Jim Milan came out and said he wanted to cut taxes across the board and set a flat tax, um, I just I'd, I'd start getting starry eyed. And then if he uh, if he said he also wanted to legalize all drugs, I'd just be like, "Marry me now, Jim. You're the best man I've ever met in my entire life." Matthew, I got news for you. Something, something tells me something tells me Jim isn't Jim Mullen is going to do that last one. I don't think he's going to do the last one, so I'm pretty safe there, yeah, thankfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it would be it would be great if someone would actually stand up in Parliament and and say we should end the war on drugs. But there are more important things, obviously, like immigration and taxation and welfare are uh, way more important than the legalisation of drugs because you can just get them anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes. Well, let's talk about taxation and evidence-based policy. Um, it's been a really, really interesting week over at the ABC. Um, uh, are you talking about Emma yeah. Alberici's article? Yes. I... Just finished writing that up yesterday, the script, and I recorded all the voicing for it. It's quite long. I had to cut it down a little bit. It's over 20 minutes because it was a long article and I've added an extra at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I think it's going to come across nicely. Um, I mean, economics is a topic that a lot of people do find a little dry, so I'm trying to keep it as fast-paced and interesting as possible. But basically, I'm going to ask the question, do tax cuts increase wages and do they cause economic growth now her answer to those Brilliant. questions was no and no but mm -hmm. she's an idiot and mm -hmm. i'm going to explain to everyone why keeping in mind emma alberici is the chief economics correspondent at the yeah. abc yeah. and she yeah. doesn't even know that tax cuts are good for wages how this is the where, hell is that yeah. even possible this is where can, can i butt in mate because um i wanted to yes. ask you questions like um 
I didn't study economics, but I've been educated on econ economics over the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I had this question for you before I read that, like it had actually been brought up um, by Malcolm Turnbull. So I don't want to be seen as well, Malcolm Turnbull as a trader um, and yep. possibly a foreign agent. Um, but this is my question to you. Um, so if a company makes a loss in a year, should it pay tax? Well, it does pay tax. It does pay tax? It does pay tax. Every yeah. company pays tax. If it, Every single business, if it earns over $75,000 a year, pays tax through what is known colloquially as the goods and services tax, otherwise known as the GST. Uh -huh. So anyone who says that the that companies aren't paying tax when they make a loss is either an idiot or a liar. Now, okay. so, when a company... Um, yeah. So... so uh not including the gst if a company yep. makes a loss does it still pay tax yep because it pays payroll tax it pays fuel excise it pays fringe benefits tax if it hires any employees it pays just as i mentioned payroll tax it also pay, it also pays payg so the company actually uh -huh. pays the income tax i mean yeah it's it's shown on the employee's pay doc and it does reduce their, the, the employees pay but ultimately the company pays for it wow. uh, and if you're just talking about uh, corporate income tax mm -hmm. if they make a loss they can actually carry that loss over to another year so if you lose yes. ten thousand dollars in one year you can uh, that you can bring that that loss forward in into uh, another year and I don't see any issue with that given the current system see if I was in charge if I was in charge, there would be no corporate tax at all for a very good reason. No corporation in history has ever actually paid tax. Corporations only pay tax on paper. The people who pay tax are, first of all, employees, because employees' wages are dropped by taxation. Second of all, shareholders, because shareholders get less profit. And third of all, customers, because if you're not going to take the, if these two aren't going to, are uh, going to pay the price, then customers have to pay the price through higher prices. Yes. So no corporation has ever paid tax in history. It's just an accounting trick. So whenever these people who come out and say, we should raise the corporate tax, da -da -da, business are avoiding tax, da -da -da, they don't know what they're talking about. And the amount of people in the media who spew these lines should tell you a lot about how where the media is at in terms of their understanding of how just the basic business works, which is kind of sad if you think about it okay so then um how like so emma alberici she was saying was she saying the same thing as what you're just saying no that the corporations don't pay corporate no no okay so what emma said what emma said was that ugh, you're gonna make her repeat it again because it's just one of the <laughs> nice things i've ever read there's no point I won't do my voice. There's no point lowering <laughs> the corporate tax uh, because one in five companies don't pay tax. And uh, probably what you're alluding to is the reason those one in five companies don't pay tax is because they made a loss. Yes, <laughs> and it's been carried over. It was the same thing with uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, uh, Donald yeah. Trump was attacked for not paying tax for like yeah. seven years, but it's because yeah. he kept losing money and he was able yeah. to keep um, pushing it forward. Well, he had a big loss. I think he lost like a huge amount of money in one year and he just deducted yeah. it over the next 10 years. But again, so yeah, they're not paying corporate income tax because they made losses. And even when they made that loss, they still had to pay GST. They still had to pay payroll tax. If they had cars, they had to pay fuel excise, all these things that they had to pay. And then another thing she lose, this is the thing that these left-wing ec economists or they're just political activists. One of the things that they do is say, well, they minimize tax through legislative loophole the legislative processes or legislation lets them minimize tax and this is what she did in her article what she didn't tell her readers was the way that companies minimize tax or avoid tax as she so so delicately put it or in, in is to claim business expenses so so if you're a business and you are running your business and the cost of doing business is taken off your income. She says you're avoiding tax, apparently. <laughs> and it was unbelievable. I, I, I had to write. Like, they took it down. I don't think they should have taken it down. I think that was a mistake. They should have left it up there on their website to their eternal shame. But thankfully, the internet's forever and someone put it on their blog and then there was an archive version as well. Good. So what I'm using is a, is a blog version and I'm going to link to the blog in there. 
Um, I can't remember his name, but I did thank the guy for, for putting it up. The internet's forever. Beautiful. There's no point taking it down. It just gave these left-wing idiots something to complain about. They should have left it up there because it's a horrendous article that the ABC should be utterly ashamed about letting printing. And she honestly should be sacked because she does not understand economics. And she's the chief economics correspondent at the ABC. <laughs> she's the yeah. top economics reporter. Yeah. That, How the hell is this person the top economics reporter? Get rid of her. That, that's, that's what got me, and it's why I wanted to... Uh, conduct this line of questioning with you because I was I could see the argument straight away. Like I heard that it had been I heard that her article had been pulled, and so I was like, okay, let's have a read. And so I read that she basically made the argument that they tried to pull on uh, Donald Trump, um, it just the carrying over of of losses, and saying, oh, that's they're not paying top copper tax. And I'm and I'm like, wait a minute, she's the chief economics correspondent. I've gleaned. Uh, what I know about economics over the last 15 years. And I can pick this out straight away. I know. it's yeah. it, it was unbelievable, unbelievable that this article was printed on the ABC's <laughs> website. I, I mean, I can see why it got pulled down because they said it didn't fit their editorial standards. And goodness me, like... You'd be shaking your head if that appeared on the Huffington Post, honestly. Although it would probably fit pretty nicely on the Huffington Post, you'd still if, shake. If your head. I if I published that, I would get a couple of I would get <laughs> half a dozen emails to the private um, X Y Z account saying, "I can't believe you print this rubbish." <laughs> 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 I would get hauled over the coals for that. I'd think um, it was satire if you printed it. <laughs> I'm like, what are you trying to do, mate? Yes, of course. <laughs> it, was that it was I that bad. It was that bad. It parodied yeah. itself. Yes. It literally um, parodied itself. It was yeah. horrendous. And so I've just spent, uh, you know, I spent the last couple of days uh, writing up the script and researching. So I've got a whole lot of, you know, I've got, it's probably the most researched article I've ever done or meet research video yeah, right. I've ever done right. uh, in terms of like academic studies and, and all that kind of thing. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to make any of my own graphs. It could have, I could do it if I wanted to plug it all in, but it would just take too long. So yeah. I apologize to the fans for not making that kind of thing. I've taken a couple of graphs from other areas and, and referenced them if they're relevant. Uh, but it is, you are going to enjoy a, enjoying watching it if you enjoy watching abc propaganda get ripped apart and trust me it wasn't hard to rip it apart it was a bit of a it gave me a bit of a headache because it was so long and so bad but the the end result should be pretty good great well one one last uh, relevant anecdote on that um when we first started off the xyz and we were talking about how we wanted to get 500 um million dollars uh, so basically half the ABC's budget and, you know, we're, we're still waiting for that check in the mail from the government. Um, but uh, people were, people, uh, a couple of people tried to use the argument that um, the government was funding uh, the Murdoch press as well. Um, they said, oh, they, the government gave the, um, Rupert Murdoch or uh, uh, what, what's his company again? It's... Um, News, news outcome, news limited. Yeah, news news limited. Gave them seven hundred million dollars of government money, and they're being funded by the government as well. And so I invested. Really, is that, that, is that I, true? Uh, Sorry, I, I guess you explain it. Whether it's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a um, it was a tax return, uh, seven years worth of tax returns on tax already paid. So they'd already paid a lot more than that seven hundred million dollars, and it was a one off payment of seven years worth. Of tax returns, and they were like, "Oh, the government is funding News Limited." No, oh. yeah. this so is this so sort of thing, it's, it, This is the this is the, I guess the crux of the matter. Like that, Emma Alberici is making an argument like this, which is just, it's it's like really low level leftist arguments, and like a lot of your videos, it, it sort of just goes to show like how uneducated leftists seem to be about economics they're extremely uneducated about a lot of things and the problem with economics is they it was it's, it's just the problem with leftists in general is they actually think that they're informed when it's so easy to demonstrate that they're not like it's for me for me making these videos and and, and breaking it down i read through that and I already knew exactly what my arguments were going to be, like like immediately. Where the time, where I spent, had to spend a lot of time 
was actually going and finding the information so that I could source it in the video for other people because I know the answers, but the people who are going to watch the video don't necessarily know them well, and they maybe, don't know uh, whether maybe, what I'm saying is true. Maybe uh, Emma Alberici could have like gone and found this information. <laughs> Well, that's exactly right. This is exactly what I thought. This is the chief economics correspondent at the ABC who gets paid to do this for a living. But here I am in my bedroom and I'm able to do a better job than she is. It's like, pay me the money. Let's get, let's get XYZ the $500 million and we'll do a better job than them. Um, but then again, if we did take that government money, I think we should probably not take it <laughs> because... <laughs> oh, I mean, if it you, could buy, you could buy an awful lot of helicopters with $500 million. Well, you how, how many helicopters could you buy with a hundred with five hundred million dollars? I wonder. You could buy lots of helicopters. How much is a helicopter. Yeah, well, I'll probably ranging anywhere between a few hundred thousand to a few million, I would think. So we could probably get a fleet of various helicopters of different sizes. Fleet. And yes, yes. Fly it up to just, Canberra. We could black out the sun with our helicopters. <laughs> now you're talking about language. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so someone just asked if we, if I think Australia can, can Australia beat South? Yeah, like of can course we so? can. Of course we can beat South South Africa. Sorry, can Australia beat oh, South Africa yes. at the cricket? Yes. Of course we can beat them. Like, duh. <laughs> of course we can. Will we beat them? Uh, uh, well, they they beat us over here last time they came over here, so I think it's mm. unlikely that we'll beat them over there. I think we can for the sole reason. Does the ball swing in in South Africa? Does the ball swing in? I don't know. I have not sat down and watched the full because South African the, series ever. The impression that I get is that uh, the wickets are uh, similar to here. They're a bit bouncy. You might get a bit of movement off the seam. But if the ball doesn't swing, Australia will win. Um, since the T20s come in and Australian batsmen have stopped going to England... And instead, they go to India to play the Big Bash. They've just nobody can play swing anymore. The the moment the ball starts moving in the air, we're done. It does. Yeah, it, but, yeah I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. But if if you've got Steve Smith out there, who's going to be like, you are not getting me out. And then you have the pace attack that we have. I think we'll grind South Africa down. I reckon. Uh, you know, it'll get to about the fourth day, and then Australia will finally get the upper hand. I think that's how it's going to work. Excellent. Test matches. I say, moving on from sport, I'd love to sit here and talk sport all day, but I am by no means a, a cricket expert or a sporting expert. I've just had a, a really good question from All Poll News, who's a Twitter account that everyone should follow. Um, I think it's at All Poll News. If you want to just chuck it in the chat, then you can, but it's at All Poll News, I believe. That's A U P O L. And uh, he asked the question, do you reckon the ALP is going to go the way of British Labor Party dumping the white working class for inner city yuppie and ethnic minority votes? To answer they that question, have. exactly, they already have. It's not a matter of do I think they're going to do it. They are. They, they already have. They, the white working class are completely, have been completely abandoned by the ALP. The ALP do not care about the working class. The ALP care about... about uh, the inner city yuppie voters and union employees, so state state funded employees like the education union, um, the police unions, uh, and any public sector bureaucrat unions. These are the people that are the core of a, the ALP vote. This is all they care about. And if you have a look at all of their policies, every single one of them is about either buying votes from someone or taxing someone to buy votes. And, and or setting up industrial relations so that their union their union members can get more money. So the unions the unionists that are still in the public sector, vague, vaguely in the public sector, like the construction unions, is about getting them more money. The the ALP don't care about the working class one iota. They do not care a single little tiny bit. The ALP care about winning power, and they will win power in any way they possibly can even if it means putting Bill Tits Shorten up as leader to virtue signal every other day and give everyone who can actually think for themselves a headache. This guy is probably the worst politician I've ever seen in my entire life. He's horrendous. He's worse than Gillard. He's worse than Rudd. I cannot believe that this is the, the level that we've come to. The fact that the ALP have actually put a candidate up that's worse than Malcolm Turnbull 
Like, it's unbelievable because Turnbull's horrendous as well. You have to work pretty hard. Um, also, and also the ALP um, work really hard at importing their voters. Um, that's the other thing that they do. Um, yeah, they're, like you say, they're, they're, they only care about unions, the inner city yuppies, and diversity. Like they, they're just getting diversity votes, more and more diversity votes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah, get, um, those, get those diversity votes, i.e. Yeah. The, not the white people. Yeah. Yeah. Ironically, I think the Greens might be more white than, uh, than uh, like, if you look at their actual voting demographic, I think the Greens might be more white than Labor Party. I, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, yeah. The Greens, I think the Greens still have a large contingent of their votes from people who don't actually realise that they're communists. They only vote for the Greens because <laughs> they... It's true. Yeah, I reckon a lot of people so vote true. Green. That's I reckon a so lot of people true. vote green because they say that they like the environment and they want to legalize marijuana, and that's yeah. and that's it. I, I think most people don't actually know what their real policies are, and their real policies are from each according to his ability to each according to his need, as my really, the video I made proved. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, that was a that was a really good question. Thanks all, Poland News, for that one. Um, just moving on, we'll go on to the the next topic. I was, just wanted to speak about um, Hannah Mousy as well, and the fact that she's been What's allowed. Or hey, hey, I can't remember what his name is, but I didn't know this one hundred percent before. But apparently, he he still has his uh, meat and potatoes, so he's really? still actually a bloke in in completely a bloke. I mean, not like. Not like the transition ever actually fully changes your chromosomes, but the guy's still got his um, his banana and pineapple. I and he's think that play. makes sense. And he's going to play. He's going to play with No, so VFLW. Yeah. So they said that he can't play AFLW, but he can play VFLW, which is like this is typical AFL bullcrap. They're run by leftists, obviously, because they, they don't know how to have consistency ever. But if I was a girl. And I was coming up against him. I just say I'm not playing. It's that simple. I will not play. The problem is all these girls are be cowed by the social justice, so they'd be afraid to stick their neck out. I would love it, absolutely love it, if a girl turned around and said, "I will not play against that bloke." I made a video about it a while ago. That is a monster of a man. <laughs> it's a huge, huge guy, huge. six foot yeah. two, 100 kilos. I wouldn't want to be fighting against that bloke. No, he's big. His hands are like, like massive. He's a big boy, and they want him to play against the girls. I just, I can't believe that they'd let that happen. Um, yeah, it's it's a funny one because um, for females, like getting social opprobrium is a really big deal. It's a bad thing. So whether any females are really going to be whether they're actually going to be able to stand up and say something about it. Like if they do, they're going to need a lot of support because any, any female footballer who stands up and makes an issue of this is going to have a world of pain, like just descend upon them. Yep. Yeah, and someone just mentioned in the chat, which is true. He still likes girls. <laughs> so he's still a heterosexual male. Who's attracted to females? It's a guy in a. It's a guy in a dress. It's a dude in a dress. He takes pills to drop his estrogen level. He may as well just drink soy. He's like the ultimate soy boy. His testosterone level. Yeah, yeah. He should. He should just drink more soy. And G Slim just asked, "Has any have any women actually spoken out?" And as you mentioned, I, I doubt that they have. And like you said, they have. It's that, gonna be really hard on them. It's gonna, it's gonna be, be really hard on them. Yeah, because like you said, they yeah. they have that. That social stigma, the social anxiety is a lot more stronger for them. The, the, I can't, what, what was the word that you used for it? I, I can't remember what you used. A world of pain. A world of pain. Well, something about so, so, social opprobrium. So, social opprobrium. That's a yeah. opprobrium. There's a word that I've never heard before in my life. I'm showing uh, my British <laughs> roots. Opprobrium. <laughs> Hello, I'm probably, David Hiscott, okay. and I like tea and opprobrium. <laughs> <laughs> Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Earl Grey. I have my problem with milk, thank you. And soy <laughs> milk, too. <laughs> no, none of that. And uh, yeah, so no, I don't no, think no, any, sorry, Dix, I, I don't think any uh, any women have actually spoken out about it. Yeah. And which, uh, what, what which is not surprising. Yeah. 
What strikes me about it is it, it's just another case of the left never stop. Um, like, like I read an article and they're saying, oh, no, there's more research that's been done and blah, 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 blah. It's you, you, you try to stop it at one point and they'll find a way around it. Um, there's no, no, it's not going to happen. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I won't try to play AFL anymore. Um, yeah. It's like, no, you can't do it. Well, I'm going to keep going with this until I can get it. Like the left never stop. They always find a way. And it's, it's sad because it means that people like us who would rather just be left alone have to be eternally vigilant. Exactly. And it reminds me, there's a, if anyone is watching this who hasn't seen this YouTube channel, Freedom Tunes, you've got to go watch Freedom Tunes. They're hilarious. He does this one, one of these videos is like left us in 2008, left us in 2016. And it's like, you know, what do you mean this is going to happen? And then like in 2006, oh, I can't remember it all. And I can't, I don't want to ruin it either. But it's Does like, it have the left the we're, not, this, yeah, we're not going to do that. You're just being paranoid. And then in 2016, they completely did it. It's like, does it, does it have yeah. less? Does it have leftists in 2008 saying um, <laughs> that gay marriage is like just like just conspiracy? Bingo. Tin, tin Bingo. Fall, like, exactly. Yeah, yes, it certainly happen. does. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's like I think was it was it Lucas Rosas or someone else wrote an article where you just gotta you just have to say no. They never stop. You've just got to yeah. say no, no I think to a whole that. Bunch of us have basically made that argument. Yeah, it's yeah. just yeah, like you you have to say no. Never apologize. Tell them to get stuffed. Tell them to get stuffed. Never ever 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 back down or apologize to these leftist swine. Like do a Jim, this is why I like Jim Mullen. So like when he just yeah. came in and just refused to apologize. And not only did he refuse to apologize, he's turned around to Adam Bent and said, I'm going to sue you for your, for your comments. Yes. And yes. He, cowed, he went straight back into his little shell and yeah. little soy boy, Adam Bent just you know, got humiliated in public. And it was great to watch. Like you know, they, they, this is the, this is the so I'm getting a bit carried away here. I'm just like, <laughs> you know? well, it's, but yeah, it's Jim, exciting Jim to Dillon, see, yeah. isn't it? Oh, we it's don't, great. We don't see it very often. It's, it's great. It's like the point in the movie where the guy, you no, know, it's it's like the point in the Rocky movie where Rocky is just being pummeled. He's just taking so many so many hits, and then he gets himself up again, and he's he's still up. He's st he's exactly. still alive. He's still going, and then he just just starts punching back. It's yes. what, what we've got to remember is that we have to keep punching. Like yeah. yes, like one guy has said has said no. I won't apologize. I'll sue you. And he's made them turn around. This yep. has to happen across the board. This ha has to happen thousands of times a day with, with thousands of individual Australians saying yep. no to this sort of rubbish. Just never, ever, ever, ever back down. Never yeah. back down. Never be ashamed of telling the truth. Mm. If someone gets angry at you for telling the truth, and if they get start calling your names and all that kind of thing, never, ever, ever back down. If they start yelling and screaming at you, you just look them in the eye, you stare them down, and if they cross the line, you call them out on it right away. You never, ever apologise for telling the truth or sticking up for what you believe in. It's so important. And I think this is where the conservative right has really let a lot of Australians down over the last few years in that they haven't stood up for a lot of these people that get picked on and bullied by the left. And now, thanks to the internet, it's just, I think it's hopefully going to explode where guys like Jim Milan are going to just stand up and show the example. So when other people say it, they can turn around and say, no, 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 don't back down. Don't back down. Don't apologize. Look them in the eyes, stare them down, show them you're not afraid, show them that you don't care, show them that telling the truth and speaking your mind, you, you are never going to back down, which without getting too religious here is actually what Jesus was telling people when, when he back in the day, which is what the entire basis of Christianity is. I don't want to get into a religious discussion, but that is the basis of Christianity is standing up for what you believe in. And when people try and like when the government or someone else tries to, to put you down for, for telling the truth and saying things that you, you do believe in, you never back down. You stand up, you take your licks and you, you provide the example. You show the example of someone who is a, a truly good person, a truly moral individual who's living a good life by just not backing down and, and not apologizing for, for, for telling the truth. Anyway, I've ranted a little bit. I've said tell the truth a lot of the time, but it's important to tell the truth. <laughs> Yeah, well, people are drawn to that sort of thing. Um, I'm interested in this 
final topic, um, talking about backing down, like someone has actually backed down, this guy, Logan Paul. Uh, uh, sorry, someone just asked a question about... Oh, let's uh, go with that, yeah, let's go with that. Do you want to talk about Logan Paul or do you want to talk about uh, can fake marriage be repealed? Oh, well, uh, somebody's actually written an article on that idea, like going back to evidence-based policy, like sort of uh, re like looking at um, in ten years' time, like we need to, we, well, we need to start the studies now to actually study like how fake marriage has an effect on society, like on children, um, it just on the institution of marriage, like on how many of these fake marriages last and that sort of thing how people behave in these marriages and then in 10 years time they could look at it and go okay well has it been a benefit to australia should we keep it i think evidence-based policies are very important i think it's going to be very important to also get properly objective evidence-based studies as well because i won't trust anything that comes out of a left-wing university when it comes to these marriages i'm just going to flat out dismiss it unless it conforms to my view if it conforms to my view then i believe it <laughs> Because if it conforms to my view, then it's probably true if a left-wing university has done it. Um, if, a, a, you know, if maybe an objective, you know, if a, if a, for the same reason, if like a, a Christian group, a truly Christian group came out and found that it was totally fine, I'd probably believe that as well. Um, but I'm just sort of, which is what, I'm, what I'm getting at is it's important to have objective evidence that is objective and does actually show uh, what is true and what isn't. I think we've spoken about this before when it comes to to fake marriage and to marriage law. There is now no reason to have marriage law at all. Uh, I, there, the whole point of marriage law is to protect the biological parents and their biological children. That's why you have marriage law in the first place. Otherwise, we can just do it as uh, civil contracts or, you know, you, I, I think what a, lot, what a lot of Jewish people in America do is have their own, their own marriage, like their own agreement um, as part of their synagogue or, you know, as part of the marriage that's arbitrated by the synagogue. I think we should just go to that and just not worry about marriage law at all. I, I Could that be a slippery slope? Then we could have, like, um, Sharia marriage. Well, here's the thing. This is why it's important to stop this kind of, like, to, to really make sure that the pe people from the religion that shall not be named really don't come here. Because ultimately, if these people are choosing to do that on their own of their own accord, and they aren't uh, violating anyone's civil rights by doing it, so the two individuals are actually volunteering to go into that, then they should. My libertarian, in, the libertarian in me, says that they should be allowed to do that. But at the same time, the libertarian in me is so completely against everything that Sharia law stands for that I also feel very uncomfortable saying that. And yeah. it's a discussion that we'd probably have to have another day after I've maybe it's maybe considered it a bit more. It's a massive one. The, the the one for me is like um, as I was as we were saying, like the left never stops, and we have to push back every day, all the time. Um, in the same way, like uh, if we just view all of these um, changes that the left are enforcing as like it can't be changed anymore, and like in ten years' time, the conservatives will all be like, well, a lot of conservatives are already all for gay marriage, but like. If we just accept it as a fait accompli and it's always going to be that way, then the left is always going to win. So, uh, yeah, it's in terms of a mindset that conservatives can have, they can take on the mindset that uh, it can always be pushed back. Well, of course it can be pushed back. And I think that's what we're doing right now. This is yeah. really just the beginning of, of what could end up being a big movement. Like America's got a much bigger movement because they've been doing it for a lot longer. Australia's... We we really are some of the first movers in this in this right of centre, classically liberal. What, was it? what did I say last week? It was a cla uh, con classically liberal conservative libertarian or something like that. The classically liberal conservative <laughs> libertarian free thinking movement, uh, because we don't use labels. I think it's important. <laughs> it's important that we yeah, like I said, we just keep going. That we keep pushing back, keep pushing out content, keep. People keep writing articles and in our everyday life, keep trying to inform people, keep telling people about the truth and all that kind of thing. And this is what I do. I've, mm. I've started very recently just, you know, just speaking my mind. Like, as people know, I do drive Uber and I've just been started speaking my mind. I pick my targets. Obviously, sometimes I won't, I won't push uh, 
you know, won't, I won't say what I'm really thinking if I get the vibe that they might not be able to handle it. But most of the time, if I think there's a chance that they will, I'll just say what I think. And it's very, very rare. I've only had that one issue with uh, those, which I believe it was those two girls who got a bit upset because I said that free speech was an absolute right. Fancy that. But most of the time people will sit, they'll listen and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll politely either if they disagree internally, they won't say anything. But I would think most of the time, if you're, if you have a good argument, if you have a compelling argument that's expressed in a compelling way, most people will listen to it and, and, and agree. Even if, even if they don't agree with everything, they'll at least listen to you as well. Well, it's um, it's part of the classic cabbie ride experience, isn't it? You know, like you have an interesting discussion, yeah, <laughs> with the cab driver. Yeah. You know, like you're bringing it back. Well, that's exactly right, and I'm not afraid to say what I think, um, because if you're offended by my opinions, then that's your problem, not mine. Which is why everyone should get to this free speech rally if you're in Melbourne. I'm going to really try oh, hard to get that? there. It's next Saturday mm-hmm. at one o'clock, and I think it's gone to the state library now. So it should be it should be good. I'm going to try and Who's head down. Play? Oh, some oh, I can't remember his name, but he was on. I think he was on. He was on Independent Man, Independent oh, yeah. Man's channel. He did a live stream or he did a long form interview with him. Okay. But yeah, you can if you just if you just Google Google with Duck Duck Go. Uh, Melbourne Free Speech Rally, uh, or it's on Facebook as well. So I don't use Google or Facebook. So you can, you can you can use either of those if you still do. But yeah, it's it's next next week it's on it's Monday. The leg- no, it's the on legacy Sunday. social media. Legacy social media, dinosaur social yeah. media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, DuckDuck goes a million times better than Google for research, and I'll tell you that one hundred percent factually yeah. because it doesn't tailor the 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 search results to any kind of anything other than these are the top search results for everyone so it's really really good for research um and then there's it's not so good for images though there's other things other other places i use for, for images like bing and quant uh, but yeah check out this this free speech rally next week if you can get along it should be good uh, now before we finish up i just wanted to there's just one more thing we want to talk about uh, Queen B Andy, uh, if he's still in the chat, I don't know if he's still in there, but he mentioned Formula One Grid Girls. Um, I'm gonna miss them. So Philip, that it was one was blonde and one was a redhead. Just to answer your question, Philip, they asked me what color the the girl hair of the girls were in the in the Uber ride. Um, but yeah, so we can we should mention Grid Girls because it was a few weeks ago that they banned it, but the Grand Prix is coming up soon. Uh, Queen Ben Andy sort of mentioned that um, he didn't want them to get rid of Octagon Girls as well. Hopefully that never happens. But I, I for one, am boycotting the Formula One forever yeah. until they bring back Grid Girls. I will not watch Formula One. I won't give a crap about Formula One. I won't. I'll, if I if I need to, I'll turn it off the channel when it's being reported on the news. Certainly won't be buying tickets. And I'm just going to make sure everyone knows that how much I hate the Formula One because not only well, actually, I won't mention I won't mention that that part. I'll tell you why later. But I'm going to be letting everyone know that the Formula One sucks, and I won't be going. It's um it, it, the the reasoning of the left is just so ridiculously convoluted. Like I thought the whole reason that they wanted a sexual revolution was so that women could um, be free with their sexuality and dress however they wanted, and uh, use their sexuality um, for their own benefit. Um, and you cannot get a more perfect example of that with the grid girls. Um, these girls, they have an advantage over so many other women because they, uh, they're, they're, they're tens, they're nines and tens. And they use their, what, they, they use the gifts that God has given them to their fullest advantage and they just they flaunt it while they've got it. Um, but like it just seems to be like yeah, there's this cutoff. It's like uh, no, like you're still serving the patriarchy. What what now? What it comes down to is that feminists are jealous of beautiful women. A hundred percent. And they will do anything they can to destroy them. Um, and it is a it is actually a biological reproductive strategy. Um, the, the the best example you can get is that like when. Summer comes along, the first girls to go out wearing shorts are the hot ones. Um, because, like, when, you know, like in winter, like their, their biological advantage over the uglier ones might be down here. When summer comes up, it's like that. 
And so the less they wear, the more biological advantage that they have. And so uh, when feminists see this sort of thing, it just triggers them because like, they're like, well, how am I ever going to reproduce my genes? And that's literally all it comes down to. Yep. I, yep, I, I do tend to, I, I mean, you're stating biological facts. I, I would imagine that there's probably a little bit more to it than that, but at a fundamental level, that is that is the truth. You're a racist. I can't a, believe you said that. I'm a, what do you mean? I'm a, I'm a misogynist. I'm a complete misogynist. <laughs> you hate women because you think some women are Because more you disagree with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it, it was really funny watching some of these feminists um, interview, uh, like being debates with these people, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, they they really had no answer to the the objections that these girls would say." Well, th th these beautiful women are saying, "Well, it's it's my choice. I like the job. I want to do it. Why mm -hmm. can't you do it?" And they just come back with the same feminist talking points of, oh, it's oppression and the uh, objectification and blah, 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 this and blah, 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 that. And it's funny, I saw one meme. It was like, apparently it was side by side, you know, the slut walk where they're all just dressed in nothing and disgusting feminists next to the yeah. uh, the grid girls. And it's like, this is not this is okay, but this isn't. And it's like, yeah. Please, yeah. it's so yeah. transparent. And the, the, yeah. we shouldn't be complaining too much because... I didn't really like the Grand Prix beforehand. I mean, I didn't mind it. I mean, like, who, what kind of bloke doesn't like car racing? And think, but I really, truly think that feminists have genuinely overreached themselves. They got rid of them in darts, like so. They got like they've got rid of these grid girls in darts. So the the walk on girls in darts, and they've got rid of it the grid girls now. I think what that would do, all that's done is wake up a lot of blokes and a lot of women, especially these women, to how cancerous feminism actually is. Most people don't care about this kind of thing, you know, 360 days out of 365.25. Uh, they don't care. But when this happens, they do care. They turn around. They look at how bad feminism is. They Google feminism is cancer or whatever on YouTube and they get 10,000 videos telling them exactly how bad feminism is. And it's really mm. bad for feminists in the long run. So, yes, well done. You got your Pyrrhic victory. You, didn't, you don't have to see attractive women um, taking away your resources. But... It's going to make you lose in the long run because now a whole lot more people hate feminism, a lot more hate feminism now than they did two months ago. Um, two points on that. First of all, like um, I'm always a little wary of sort of I'm, I'm, I'm starting to call it the critical mass argument, the idea that, um, uh, you know, like oh, surely this one will wake everybody up. Um, like we've got to understand, again, it's a war and it's a long, it's a long hard slog. And like, again, just like we were saying before, all of these things need to be pushed <laughs> back at. Um, but yes, this is definitely one which will get the people who aren't political junkies like us. Like we, we, we see this and this is like part of a pattern and we're like, oh, this is, this, is, this is just more of the same. But for people who don't pay attention to politics 100% of the time like we do, um, it'll be a real one of the just it, it's, it, it is a real moment. Yeah, I, I, I do tend to agree with what you said in terms of it's not going to maybe completely wake people up, but it will make people sit up and take notice. Yeah. And, you know, one this thing happens here and then, all, you know, maybe a feminist will do something in their life or someone else's life or that something, some other you know, feminist will do something else or some other lefty will do something else. And it all stacks up, and yeah, it's just a matter of continually keeping on their case and pointing out, pointing it out when it happens, yeah. and engaging yeah. people whenever you can, one step at a time. These leftists have four decades head start on us, and we've caught up pretty well within the last five years. And yeah. in Australia, it's really only been sort of the last. What? When did you start X Y Z? Like two years ago? Uh, year yeah, ago. mid two, mid two thousand fifteen. So, so really not long. It's like two and a half years ago, nearly three years ago. They've got four decades on us. I think we've caught up pretty well within three years. I mean, I've only been really, I mean, I've been engaged for the last sort of decade or so, but it really only out there, um, out there spreading the ideas since that first, uh, the first ever article I published on XYZ, which was a satire about uh, 
Hillary Clinton, which you should go check out if you're watching. Yeah, I, remember, I remember it well. Hopefully, we're in this yeah. stream and we're, start, we're engaging the DRS. Yes, hopefully, hopefully we just get people more engaged. I think just more good, entertaining content. I think we should focus on being as entertaining as possible as well, which is what I try and do with my channel. Like I'm talking about the economics and social commentary and all that kind of stuff, but I try and make it as fun and, and interesting yeah. as possible, like and, and engaging and all that kind of thing. I think that I feel like I can speak and keep people engaged well enough. But I want to make it, I want to, I really want my content to go to the next level and make it really good so that someone coming along is just going to be like, wow, who's this guy? This is, this is really fun. I've never, I've never seen these ideas presented in this way before. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys doing sort of something similar, but I want mine to be, because I'm doing the on camera, like I'm doing on camera, I'm doing the, the other stuff. I'm, I like to have a lot of visuals and all that kind of stuff in my content. I like to keep it uniquely me and keep it fast paced as well. I like um, Short Bass Matty. Short Bass Matty is a lot of fun. <laughs> Short Bass Matty. <Maddie. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's my favorite character of all. I love him. I don't he's, know. He's great. He's, he's really Short great. Bass Matty. He's so yeah. funny. He's like, <laughs> I couldn't yeah. say that because he's my own character. But I he, he was him. used very, him. very well in the in the last one. On the What uh, was that? The Trickle Down yeah, Economics? Trickle, yeah, Trickle Down Economics. Short Bass Matty. <laughs> what have you been reading, <laughs> Short Bass? <laughs> Yeah. It's my it, sword. It, he, he's a great foil. He's a great foil. Like it, it just it provided the narrative for the whole video. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, and I've got wait until you see my how to how does democracy fail video. I've yeah. finished it. I haven't rendered it or anything yet. It doesn't have short bus in it, but I've done a little cartoon, like a little movie cartoon with penguins and ah, oh, the penguins are back. The penguins are back, and they have yeah, voices yeah. now. They have prop voices, and we've done, we've got a little story and and all that kind of thing. You, I think you're really going to enjoy it. I might do a little preview in my video because I'm going to do this Emery Alberici video first, and then I'll I'll publish the I'll publish the Why Democracy Fails maybe in a week or so. Uh, I'll see I'll see how we go. I'm, I just you know I don't want to be publishing too much content right away because I can't make it that quickly. Um, someone also just mentioned, where is it, Steve? Just have to give a an honourable mention to this comment to this question: Is Clementine Ford like as a grid pig? <laughs> Will she be a grid pig? <laughs> 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 Double thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got my answer. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Steve. You win the live stream for the day. Other than that, the face uh, when the yeah. XYZ editor loses it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Queen B. Andy just asked a question about uh, did Canadians change the national notice when um, Trudeau changed the national anthem? Sorry, I, I, I didn't actually hear that that happened. Oh. It doesn't surprise Thanks, me. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, so sort of we've been gone for just over an hour, which is about the time that we usually go for. Thank you absolutely, everyone, again, for, for watching the XYZ live stream. Again, we'll be here next week, barring a natural disaster. And uh, we will be here every single uh, every single Monday night until further notice. We will be trying to get uh, maybe some guests in a, a, as well. Me and Dave have to talk about that. If you know anyone that, that is in the public light that might want to come on our show, please please let them know. We'd be happy to have um, any kind of prominent guests or anyone who, you know, you know if you think that they'd, they'd be good on the show, just let us know and we'll get in touch and we might bring them on. Um, other than that, we'll, you know, every week it'll be me and Dave just discussing the issues of the week. I really hope you guys enjoyed it again this week. Uh, don't forget to check out XYZ's uh, website if you haven't already. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. David, did you want to say anything before we left? Yeah, um, just as usual, thank you, everybody, for continu continuing to read our stuff and uh, just enjoy our stuff. Thank you for continuing continuing to contribute to the XYZ Patreon. Um, yeah, and we just hope we can keep providing really good content. Excellent. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, sure. David... Pleasure as always. Absolutely. Thanks, man.